All right, so this first problem here is not necessarily one that will keep it from running at all. What will usually happen with this is, is it'll start up and run kind of rough. Then it might die 30 seconds later, whatever. But you'll want to come around here and take a look at your muffler and see if this spark arrestor screen might happen to be clogged up. If you store this in a shed or someplace like that where mud daubers can get in, they may come in here and build a nest right here in the muffler or in the spark arrestor, or on top of the spark arrestor. It'll probably be on top of the screen here. I'm not sure if they can get through the screen, but you'll want to take this thing out and clean it up nevertheless. So if you have any trouble getting this thing out of here, you might just want to give it a little light tap around the edges and just slowly work it loose. I know this one isn't clogged up, but I'm just showing you this is a possibility. And just kind of wiggle it out And it looks just like that, all right? You'll want to clean this up with a wire brush, some water, whatever it takes. Just be careful not to damage the screen. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so this next problem is one that I've seen a couple of times, and it's with this selector switch. Now notice, if you switch it over to regular gasoline, we have a red light, okay? So if we come over here to our natural gas propane setting, we don't have a red light. So if you see that where there's no red light, the fastest way is to take off this knob and you can see inside what's going on. Okay, so if you notice, we have three switches right here. We have our off, we have our gasoline switch, which works, we have our red light, back to off. And then if you notice here on the left, our propane natural gas switch is out of place right there. So we need to investigate that from behind. Now in order to get behind this, we could take off this whole panel right here, okay, by taking out these bolts that are around the outside of it. But the problem I found was is when you do that, you have a hard time getting enough slack and everything so that you can clearly see behind what's going on. I have found that taking out the gas tank is the easiest way to access all that stuff. It's just a few bolts. Okay, so even though I could get to this switch through the side right here, what if it was this switch or what if it was this switch? It's just a lot easier to get to it from the top. Let's go ahead and pull these two out. We just got to get this cover off to get to the bolts. There's two more on the other side, just like this. And just go ahead and get this cover out of the way right here. Now, one thing that I would also do is disconnect this negative line right here. You never know. We're messing with uh, some electrical stuff, and you don't want to short anything out by accident. All right, so as you can see, we've got a gas tank bolt here and another one over there. So we just need to undo these two fuel lines right here. Now, if you've got fuel in your gas tank, you'll want to tilt the generator up so that the fuel is away from these ports right here and go to your local parts store and pick up a set of these vacuum caps right here. These will uh, keep the gas from leaking all over the place, or if you're not in a hurry, you can get these from Amazon too. And then if you've got fuel in it, go ahead and put a cap on right there. And we'll just get these remaining bolts out, four bolts right here. I know this seems like a lot of trouble, but it's really not. It might take five minutes. And you want to pull this support out and you'll have to pull out the gas cap and undo this little clip at the top right here. Yeah, so this is kind of a flimsy design actually, but here's the problem. Here's the switch came loose. Now this one isn't broken, but it's just held on by a screw that's going through this ear right here in the corner. So all of the tension from everything is put right on this corner. Now this corner can break off, and when it breaks off, it causes this switch to be loose. So I've just simulated the problem right here. As you can see, here's the other one. Here's the off switch. It's just in the corner right here, and then the other switch is over there. There's actually a number on the switch right here. It says DV16. So you might be able to get one of these switches if you can't get a hold of Furman to get a new replacement switch. Um, I've even seen these kind of switches and microwave doors and stuff like that, so they're not very hard to find. We're just going to put this one back, and then that's going to solve the problem. 
All right, so if you've left your generator sit for a number of months, or even years possibly, then more than likely this next one is going to be what's wrong with your generator. Now unfortunately, these generators have a metal gas tank, as do many other generators, and they have a tendency to rust out from the inside when you leave gas sitting in them. Now if that has happened to you, you'll want to remove the gas tank, as I just showed you, and you'll want to clean out that gas tank as, as best as you can with water, and then uh, get all the rust flakes out of there to make sure they don't come in and recontaminate the carburetor. I did a video a while back on that. I used a product called Evapo Rust, and it did actually work pretty good. But uh, they also mess up the carburetor, so we're going to take this carburetor off and take a look inside. Now, this one is going to be clean. I've never had gas sitting in this one, but I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way on a carburetor that is messed up because of gas. Now, I've already removed the cover here and the air filter, and I've removed these six nuts that are around the perimeter of this, so this will just come right off so we can get to the carburetor. You'll want to remove the breather tube right here. And you'll want to remove the nut that's right behind this right here. It's a 10 millimeter nut. And just go ahead and pull the air box off. And you'll want to disconnect the gasoline fuel line. And the LP fuel line. Now you'll want to be careful not to tear any gaskets right here, and there's also another one up against the engine right here, so just kind of carefully pull that loose, like so, and then give the carburetor a little turn. And we'll just need an Allen wrench to get this off of here right here. Just like that, that's all. All right, so one thing that I recommend if you let these things sit, let's face it, most generators do a lot of sitting, is pull the fuel lines like I showed you earlier from the gas tank, drain the gas tank into a good container like a gas can, and leave the cap off of it so it'll evaporate, and take this screw out right here and let the system drain. This hopefully will drain the fuel out of the fuel line, and this will definitely drain the fuel out of the bowl and just leave that out for a week or two so that the fuel in the bowl can evaporate. That's a good way to store a generator with no gas whatsoever. You can use the ethanol free gas, but it's only good for about a year, and then after that, that starts going bad too. So let's go ahead and remove this bowl. Carefully pry that off of there. As you can see, this one is pristine because I've only run propane in this one. But in case you've left gas in yours, you're going to want to do this to get it cleaned out. Pull the pin out right there and remove the float. Now we're not done yet. If you look up in here, we have a screw head, a flathead screw head right there. That's your emulsion tube. You'll want to pull that out as well. Now most screwdrivers kind of have a wedge, you know, design. So I've taken this one and put it on a grinder to flatten out the sides of it so that it will go in the tube to get these loose. Now, if yours doesn't just fall out, you can smack it around on some wood, something like that. Now, if you look in your bowl and see that it's all corroded and nasty looking, you can take some carburetor cleaner and some steel wool and clean that very lightly, some fine steel wool, to get into these nooks and crannies right down at the bottom here, you can push your steel wool down in there and then kind of scoot it around with a screwdriver to kind of clean those nooks and crannies out and then re-clean it up with carburetor cleaner and some compressed air and that'll do the trick on that. I've done lots of these and they always come out pretty good. Now to clean out your emulsion tube, if you had a set of rods like this, that would be really helpful it's got some various different size rods. You'll want to find the one that'll fit through the little tiny little holes in your emulsion tube. And you'll want to go through every single hole very carefully, just like so, and clean every hole. And then when you're done with all the holes, you'll want to spray that with some carburetor cleaner and go behind that with some compressed air. You'll want to do the same thing with this little jet here. Clean it through the middle. 
like so. And this little jet is the same way. Find the rod that fits that, clean it. Notice that's gone all the way through. Clean these side holes over here. I'm using a small little needle rod, but a bigger one would be better. Clean that up. Now inside this bowl, you'll want to do the same thing. You'll want to take some steel wool. These emulsion tube columns right here usually get pretty corroded looking. You'll want to clean that with some steel wool and chase the uh, steel wool around with a screwdriver to get the nooks and crannies cleaned up in here. You'll want to clean these holes right here. There's two or three, four of them right there. Make sure you clean those up and go behind it with some air and some cleaner. And you'll also want to make sure your needle and seat is clean. I found you can shove a little bit of steel wool down inside and kind of with a screwdriver and kind of spin it around like so, like that, and that will clean that out pretty well. Now, uh, steel wool will leave some residue in there, so you'll want to make sure and blow that out to get all the little fibers that the steel wool may leave behind. And also, you'll want to make sure that your needle is clean as well. Now, that's got a rubber tip on it, so you got to be careful with that. A couple more holes right here you don't want to miss, right here. Make sure and clean that out, and over here is one as well. So make sure and clean those. And last but not least, you'll want to remove your idle screw. Pop this off right here. And then pull this jet out right here. Right? And give that a clean as well with the rods. All right? So I'm going to put this thing back together exactly the way I showed everything, and we're going to give it a little test. Notice we got the solid red light now. Runs like a champ. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.